Seems appropriate. What's up guys, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the vlog, and welcome back to the day after earnings. You see, yesterday after hours, Tesla reported earnings, and we're heading upstairs to talk about it. So, as of right now, Tesla's trading up about 62 points, which is pretty much right in line with what options predicted. A simple way to know how far a stock is expected to move on earnings. Look at the uh, at the money nearest date call options and the price that you pay for it and then the nearest dated put options and what you would pay to buy one of those, add them together, that's roughly what it should move. So it's predicted to move around 60 points. It's up about 62 points, up around a little over 10% today. Yesterday, after hours, it was up a little over 70 points, so like 650, 652. Um, so it has a little room to run. However, it is one of the highest shorted stocks in the stock market, which means we could continue to get more and more squeezes. However, as it goes higher and higher, there's more people that are inclined to short or sell or take profits. So it's kind of a balancing act. Um, but nonetheless, they did beat on both EPS and revenue, which is obviously very, very impressive. Um, something interesting was that they were able to do all of this while investing heavily in a new factory in Shanghai and uh, starting the production of Model 3s there. Um, so they did actually note on the conference call that they had, I guess, negative profit margins, if that's right. They, they were losing money on the Model 3s they were selling because they had to recoup the costs of building the factories and all of that stuff. Um, I mean, obviously going forward, that, that should change, but building a brand new factory and getting that up and running and um, all of the CapEx costs that go into that, it's, it's kind of expected, but still very impressive quarter nonetheless. And well, yeah, they're, they're trading at all-time highs. Um, much happier that he didn't take the company private at $420 a share because now it's trading over $620 a share. So, uh, you know, you take what you can get and uh, I guess you just enjoy the ride. So some things that are very interesting for this year and earnings going forward are gonna be profit margins on the Model Y. Um, as they're able to get that out, there's obviously gonna be better margins on that car seeing as how it's a similarly streamli streamlined process to the Model 3. However, they're gonna charge a little bit more just as the X costs a little bit more than the Model S. However, the X was probably more complicated to make and manufacture, but I don't really know the breakdown of those numbers, so we're not gonna get into that. I will be curious to see how that car plays out and how that feeds into earnings and uh, revenue going forward. Now, some things that they noted, they were able to start production on the Model Y sooner than expected, so they've already started producing the car, I believe, in limited quantities, um, which means that we should see the car in the next couple months, maybe by the end of this quarter even, uh, some deliveries to people. Whereas before, I think it was slated for like fall of 2020 as the earliest delivery, so really pushed up the timeline here. Now, Musk was uh, pressed multiple times about you know going into uh, maybe battery efficiencies or why aren't the Model S and X is using the same cells as the Model 3s and the Model Y potentially. Um, and he's just talking about you know efficiency with the drivetrain and how they're different. Uh, even though they're different cells, they still get good efficiency out of both of them. Um, however, he did say that there will be a battery and maybe drivetrain. I know there's at least gonna be like a battery investor day, kind of like they did with the autonomy day. Um, so I'm very excited to this. I wanna see sort of a deep dive into this and I guess how far ahead they are compared to other competitors. They said that the true range of like the Model S and X haven't officially been updated on their website, but they're getting closer to like the 380 uh, mile range for those cars. So either way, super, super impressive numbers with these cars, especially for the size of the battery packs compared to any other competitors out there. As we know, the Taycan was rated at only around a 200 mile range um, for a similar battery. So Tesla's almost getting double the range than the Porsche Taycan. So super impressive. However, you could also say that uh, the Taycan supposedly, I guess, has you know reputable performance at any battery level. And you know they could just be protecting the battery pack by doing that. So I don't, I don't know obviously all the uh, engineering behind both cars because well, Porsche hasn't come out with all of that stuff, but I'm excited for this battery day. Elon said he's aiming for most likely April. So probably the beginning of the second quarter of this year. Um, and they, sh they should talk a lot about their battery technology, obviously. And he did mention that I think they will be covering that acquisition of Maxwell Technologies and how they're either integrating currently or going to integrate that technology. So again, 
very interested to hear what he has to say about that because that's obviously been a, let's see, it's probably been a year or more since they've done that acquisition, maybe two years. So um, I would be interested to see what kind of further efficiencies or power outputs or whatnot. Maybe there's something with Plaid Powertrain that's going to be in that. Um, and he did also mention Plaid Powertrain. He's still hoping to get that out by the end of the year. Um, the biggest thing that they are dealing with right now is that as there's more and more demand for these cars, there's more and more demand for batteries, obviously. And unless they can actually ramp up production uh, of battery cells and battery packs for these vehicles, they can't push these vehicles out, which is partially what delayed the Tesla Semi. It just requires so much more battery cells in order to produce those vehicles that it wasn't worth it because, well, the margins are on the Model 3 and more people are buying those. So dedicate more time and resources to creating those battery cells and battery packs, selling those cars and uh, you know, obviously be profitable, increase your revenue, and then spend money where it makes sense to do so. Now, something else that was interesting is a lot of people said, well, why don't you use the fact that the stock is trading at all time highs to raise cash at you know, a lower cost basis? For example, um, if your company is worth more, you can always sell some stock in order to raise cash, to pay off debts, all of that jazz. So, um, or, or to invest more money in general right now because they're obviously doing very well. Uh, they didn't really get into this too much. They sort of uh, tiptoed around it, but they basically said they're in a good spot. They're spending money as fast as they can in ways that make sense. So they're trying to be sensible about investments and not just like spend money for the sake of spending money. Also, Elon touted the fact that they're able to have this crazy amount of demand for their vehicles with zero ad spend. So they are one of the few companies just absolutely crushing it and have crazy demand and an increase in demand. People are still obviously buying these cars. Um, they're no longer working through a backlog. These are like new customers that are coming in, coming in and buying and uh, they have zero ad spend. So phenomenal, obviously the uh, performance, the vehicles, the drivability, the money savings, all this sort of speaks for itself. And and uh, I'm definitely a car guy and, and I love, you know, a nice V10, V12 engine noise, manual transmission cars are a blast, but there's also just something to be said about electric vehicles. It doesn't matter if you're all about saving the environment or could care less because mm. to be honest, I'm kind of in that could care less, but I mean, I, I, I care, but like, I'm not gonna go out of my way. I guess I would still buy a car I enjoy driving, but. I enjoy driving my Tesla so much that I would still say if you haven't test driven any Teslas in general, just get in one. Even an older one such as mine, a 2014 rear wheel drive P85 with no autopilot. It's just such a different driving experience and it's very unique. Just as driving you know, a V10 Lamborghini with a gated manual transmission is a very unique and fun driving experience, which I haven't done, but I have done a V12 Ferrari 550 Marinello with a gated six speed manual transmission and that was a blast. But basically to each their own, you know, like that is a very fun driving experience and driving an electric car that has instant torque, one, like no, no gear shifts and is silent is a whole nother driving experience. So they are both incredible. And I, I mean, that's why Tesla's crushing it because they can appeal to both audiences. They have their performance cars that blow supercars out of the water. And then they also appeal to the environmentally friendly and then they appeal to people that like both. So it's sort of a win-win on all fronts in my mind. And I really can't wait for the next gen Roadster to come out. I can't wait for the Plaid powertrain to come out. And I can't wait for the Cybertruck to come out because all of those are super exciting just aspects and products of Tesla going forward. Um, I'm very interested to see where uh, the Maxwell technology is going to come into play. And I guess at what point, because they're getting very close to crossing the 400 you know, mile range mark on the Model S and X's. Um, to see where the Model 3s are going to be at in you know six months from now, a year from now, all of that. So uh, it is very cool what they're doing, and and I I really can't wait to see what they do just over the next year because this last year has been awesome to say the least. And um, well, I really need to upgrade to a new Tesla soon. But uh, anyways, let's let's talk some numbers real quick as far as what their EPS and revenue was. Ooh, real quick guys, if you're enjoying the content, please consider liking and subscribing as always, as always. Um, yeah, I got, I got to throw that in there. But thank you guys so much. I think I'm at like 851 subscribers, so a little uptick, but, but not much. But yeah, really appreciate it, really appreciate it. Back to earnings. Tesla reported revenue of 7.38 billion versus estimates of like 7.06 billion. 
and they reported adjusted earnings per share of I believe two dollars and fourteen cents versus expectations of around like a dollar seventy some. I also saw like a dollar sixty two, so maybe somewhere adjusted somewhere. Either way, they beat on both, and um, I guess pretty significantly to say that. Um, and doing this all while building out the Gigafactory in Shanghai, which is super impressive. Now, something that's very cool, which I'll throw up on the screen now, is that they talked about how they were able to make the factory in uh, Shanghai much more efficient and streamlined so that the production process was that much, I guess, easier and simplified, which I guess helps reduce overall costs of just like moving the cars around throughout the plants and getting them made even quicker, which means that you can ramp up production faster, uh, make cars faster, sell cars faster and make more money faster. So um, just looking at how their uh, setup is in Fremont, California, and then the setup in G the Gigafactory Shanghai, I mean, it's it's just it's so much more simple, right? It's just like, it's like a simple little loop, uh, basically a giant rectangle in Shanghai, whereas the Fremont factory, it's going to like different buildings. Um, so it's awesome that they've learned from their mistakes uh, well, not necessarily mistakes, but just like downfalls or, or where, where they can improve and, and they've implemented this stuff. Um, so this is in uh, ir.tesla.com, so like investor relations. If you go there, you can see a, a lot of their documentation. Uh, there's also some other interesting charts, but this other image that they threw up, it was basically the uh, March 2019 prototype and the January 2020 actual production vehicle, you can see they look pretty much exactly the same. A lot of car companies change a lot from pre-production vehicles to production vehicles, so it is very cool to see that I guess they've kept the same shape. Although I'm not necessarily a huge fan, I guess we'll see how it looks in real per in, 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 in person, in real person, in person, in person. Um, but nonetheless, uh, it is very cool. I do like the fact that it appears that you will be able to buy the Model Y with a, effectively a chrome delete. So it comes with like, you know, like darker rims, uh, the chrome trim on like the handles and around the windows, that's all dark or like a matte black. So I don't know if there will be an option still for chrome or if everything's just gonna be a matte black kind of color. I hope it's not just like a really cheap plastic, but it, it could be, I guess. I guess we'll find out when, when people actually start getting delivery of these cars. But I do think it looks very, very cool right from the factory. Um, also the mirrors, the mirrors have a lot of chrome on them, so they kind of got rid of that. So very nice touch that Tesla has added in there, and uh, I, I think it'll sell pretty well because I know a lot of people that do this chrome delete, um, and then, well, there's obviously a lot of people that don't care. Now, I know I kind of keep going back to this, but they were able to uh, have profitability of 359 million gap operating income. Uh, so 4.9% operating margin in Q4, which is impressive seeing as how they were building out the Shanghai Gigafactory at the same time. They also generated a billion dollars in free cash flow. Take all of that how you want, but I, I, I think it's very impressive and it sort of goes to show that I don't really understand why people are shorting the stock because there's demand for the cars, they're doing well, there's, there's a profit margin there. I don't know. It blows my mind as to how so many people will keep saying it's like a fraud. I mean, they're making an actual physical product that people can buy and you see them all over the road. So I don't really know where the fraud part comes in um, because, well, their vehicles are awesome and I have one from 2014. So it's, you know, they've been doing it for many, many years now. Uh, it blows my mind. Anyways, um, are they overvalued potentially? I mean, they're trading at over a hundred billion dollars. They're the second most valuable like car manufacturing company in the world. They just surpassed uh, VW, Volkswagen, Audi Group, or whatever. Um, the only I think car company ahead of them is Toyota, which is around two hundred billion dollars in, in market value. So it is interesting to see that uh, Ford and GM are both only around like forty or fifty billion in value uh, based on uh, their stocks and where those trade. So it is interesting to see. However. They have a lot more technology, you know. They're able to have huge profit margins on selling the autonomous. So basically, when they sell the seven thousand dollar full autonomous, you know, uh, ability for the cars, that's basically pro that's all profit. Like once they have that built out, they're just they're selling us a, a software update to their cars, and they're just pocketing that seven grand. So that's going to really increase margins on their vehicles. And even on vehicles that they've already sold, people that didn't have the full self-driving option, they can opt for that in the future, which means 
more revenue on products or cars that they've already sold, which most other car manufacturers don't have that anywhere. Like, they create a car at the factory, they sell it, and they make the money on it. There's no money coming in from that vehicle that's five years old. Whereas if you look at Teslas, they probably have cars from 2017 or 18 that could have the full self-driving, the hardware like 3.0 for full self-driving technology that could be put in. If they have all the hardware in place, then anybody that didn't buy full self-driving when they purchased the vehicle could still spend that money. So there's a lot of potential revenue coming in from that. They're obviously expanding their solar. They sell battery packs. So instead of having like a generator at your house, you can pay for a Tesla power wall and hook that up to solar panels on your roof and basically be completely off the grid if it generates enough electricity. Um, so there's, there's a lot of different routes that Tesla can make money other than just like selling a car. So you can't really compare it to Ford or GM in that sense because they have these other potential revenue streams. In California, uh, someone on the conference call yesterday asked about have they partnered with any home builders since I think solar panels are like a requirement on homes in California now? So if Tesla can get some sort of contracts in the future with home builders or um, I don't know who else, maybe with the state or something where it mandates the use of like Tesla solar powers or Tesla, the, the, the glass, the glass roof shingles that are mini solar panels, um, if they can like find some sort of contract like that, I mean, that's huge incremental revenue as well. And it's just a lot of interesting routes where they can make further revenue than, than just selling cars. Um, and I think a lot of people haven't fully analyzed that perspective of uh, where they could generate money from. And so they're not, they're not just like selling a car one and done. They have these software updates. As you've seen uh, just recently, they did the $2,000 um, acceleration boost for Model 3s that weren't performance but had uh, the dual motors. So like there, right there was another incremental $2,000 per vehicle that they had already sold. They just made another $2,000 of basically straight profit. They just pushed the software update, made the cars incrementally faster, and there's there's some more money right there. So it, it is very cool to see that they can do these sorts of things. And I think that a lot of people are sort of overlooking these aspects of Tesla and how much they're changing not just the auto industry, but uh, renewable energy, uh, solar power, uh, energy storage, and all of that. So it is very, very cool to see what Tesla is doing and how they're sort of affecting different industries. Either way, they, they crushed on earnings. Let's, uh, let's, let's check again where they're trading at right now. Uh, TSLA is the ticker if you are not you know, super familiar with stocks and how that stuff works. But $647 a share, they're up 66 points, 11.4%. Um, this, this is pretty incredible. Their market cap is 116 billion, roughly. Um, they hit a high of $650.88, and well, they're crushing it. So uh, if you wanna get in here, ARK Invest is, is saying that the stock could go to $4,000 a share, I think in the next five years, that it's like best case bull scenario. Um, so I mean, you know, do your own analysis, but it, it is it is something to think about and, and very interesting to say the least. So I'm gonna keep enjoying my Tesla. Unfortunately, it's not here with me in Maryland right now. It's, it's actually, it's down in Florida. So we'll be reunited soon. But until then, I might make one or two videos about everything I hate about the BMW because it's not my, my Tesla. Anyways, if you guys are enjoying the content, please, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, if you don't really like these earnings videos, I do apologize, but uh, next vlog hopefully will be, you know, some more active, enjoyable, interesting, maybe, maybe not. We'll see. Ooh, one last thing, guys. I can't believe I almost forgot this, but they said that this year, so, so last year they delivered, I think, a little over like 360,000 vehicles, somewhere in that ballpark. But this year, Elon's saying that they will deliver over 500,000 vehicles, which make sense if they can continue to ramp up production. They delivered over 112,000 vehicles in Q4. Um, so obviously that's on track to do what? Uh, uh, mid 400,000s. So if they can keep ramping up production and they can get to even 125,000 per quarter, they'll be at the 500K mark by the end of the year. So not only do they have obviously production in the US right now, but they just started production in uh, the Gigafactory in Shanghai, and they're also starting up the production of Model Ys. So if they can fit, hit 500,000 vehicles, obviously profit will continue to go up. 
Um, the margins on the Model Y, I believe they said were better than the Model 3. Um, they're obviously selling them for more, so revenue should increase, and uh, we should see a lot more Teslas on the road. So should be an interesting year. Should be also a very interesting Q1 since Model Y production ramp up has already started. I'll be curious to see if there are any deliveries and how many deliveries, potentially by the end of the first quarter. Um, otherwise, I look forward to the Battery Investor Day. But um, I think that's gonna be it. So if you guys are enjoying the content, please, please consider liking and subscribing. Um, but until next time, thanks for watching.